is the Cam Baker Show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And just as I promised, Dr. Eric Karlstrom will be joining us in just a moment. You're tuned into tonight's broadcast of the Kev Baker Show right here on TFRlive.com. Remember to spread the word about Truth Frequency Radio. During the break there, I heard the ad for the fact that we're also carried on iHeartRadio. You can get that on all your smart devices, including your smart TV. Thankfully, thankfully, folks, there's no camera involved because, as myself and Johnny Whistles always laughingly say, I've got a face for radio. You don't need to be seeing me in 55 inches 4K HD style. Definitely not. So then, Dr. Eric Karlstrom is back, and I'm very proud of the series of shows which we've put together on the topic of, we'll put under the umbrella for now, for lack of a better term, global gang stalking. Now, Dr. Eric Karlstrom, if you haven't heard him before, where have you been? He's an emeritus professor of geography, California State University, Stanislaus, and recently completed a 30-year teaching career. He taught physical and environmental geography courses, as well as courses cross-listed with the geology department, an honours course. Now, throughout his career, Dr. Karlstrom has continued his research programme in soils and geomorphology as means of reconstructing quaternary paleoclimates. He is also the author or co-author of many earth science publications. You can find his work over at the brilliantly named website gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. He's got another couple of websites that I'll get him to give a shout out for. But Doc, welcome back to the show. And we've got longer together tonight. This is going to be great. Yeah, well, it's great to be with you again, Kev, uh, across the pond, uh, you know, with our Skype machines here. Uh, I can tell you that Crestone, Colorado is starting to look a little bit like Scotland. We've got a nice steady rain coming down, and things are relatively green for this part of the world. Um, where we've got over 10 inches of rain this year, <laughs> which is which is a good year, believe it or not, for this part of southern Colorado. But yeah, it's great to be with you and uh, to continue this uh, important series that we've been doing on, uh, you know, what is this thing where we've been uh, talking about global gang stalking, uh, uh, electronic harassment, people are complaining about uh, uh, being electronically tortured and stalked by strangers, and this seems to be going on all over the world. Uh, most people are not given a letter uh, and informed that, okay, now you're in this program and your life is going to turn into hell. Um, they, they find out existentially uh, when these things start happening to them. And, and we're at the point now where there's just an enormous amount of information on the Internet uh, about this program. Um, so uh, we're doing our best, Kev, to try to shine some light on it. Uh, Admittedly, I don't, uh, I don't know everything about it. I'm just working on it, like many others, trying to understand it. And uh, for that reason, I really appreciate your, uh, your helping us along on this, because uh, obviously this is a huge issue and globally. Um, but yeah, my other websites, which, which preceded my gangstalking mind control cults.com, include 911nwo.com which I've been working on pretty much since, uh, you know, September 11th, and naturalclimatechange.org, as well as San Luis Valley Water Watch, which is where I live, .com, and uh, my own music site, ericcarlstrom.com. That's how I keep a good positive attitude. I play lots of banjo and make uh, CDs, and so, uh, um, so those are my five websites, which keep me plenty busy. Uh, you know, but yeah, we, what, what, go ahead. What I was saying in the first segment, you know, it's important that we do do what we actually enjoy. And if you enjoy playing music or there's artists out there, it's really important to take time out and tune into that creative side. I'm sure it does a lot more benefits for your health than people would probably ever appreciate. But in the world we live now, it's so hard to find time. And what I'm urging everyone is from now on, just make that time. Do what it is you enjoy doing. Now, Doc, to get back to tonight's broadcast, last time you were on, you opened up with something you were calling the Chew Hypothesis, and that's T-E-W, 
And this obviously comes heavily from the research and the kind of writings of Barry Chu, who himself was an, a targeted individual. And tonight's show is going to be like a follow-on of that. It's going to be part two of that. And when I write up the show notes, I'll be sure to put an actual link to the first part of this information. And before I forget, next month, the doc will be coming on for our 9-11 special. So there's something to look forward to. It's not hard to figure out what date he's going to be coming on. That's right, he's coming on 9-11. But doc, this Chew hypothesis, I'm really glad that we're getting back into this because this was interesting last time and I think it's very important information that you've put together here on the back of all this research that you've done. Yeah, you know, I'm, I've been struggling like many uh, people who have been researching this to try to figure out what is going on because this is uh, this includes lots of lots of very, very high-tech electronic psychotronic weaponry. Uh, it includes a, a, a vast cast of, of characters who seem to be uh, paid and volunteer to, to participate in these kinds of activities. So why are they doing it? Uh, uh, who are they choosing, et cetera, et cetera? And uh, what I what I've uh, I've got a couple posts on my gang stalking mind control cults uh, dot com website about the what I'm calling the Brian two hypothesis. Brian is a TI targeted individual who was a ex DOD employee, Department of Defense, and was studying to be a lawyer uh, when he became targeted. He then took his studying skills uh, to. Uh, uh, use them to full advantage to study the scientists who, who uh, uh, perhaps have the best explanation for for this program. And indeed, if we look uh, in the you know history of the kind of the black ops, the the uh, the secret uh, top secret programs in in the United States and elsewhere, but I'll focus on the United States. Uh, we see many, many, many top secret mind control. Uh, projects, starting with Operation Chatter, 1947, a Navy program, and then Bluebird and Artichoke and MK Ultra and MK Search and MK Often and and Stargate and uh, you name it. I mean, I, I can I can list off a whole bunch, and yet I'm sure I can't list them all because this has been a very very high priority uh, topic of research uh, that our intelligence and military uh, have uh, been engaged in. Anybody who wants to take the time uh, can read my article that's on my uh, website called uh, Mind Control History and Applications and get a sense of uh, this this uh, neuroscience uh, revolution that we're in and uh, the very, very, very nefarious um, uh, activities uh, of uh, mind control that our government has been engaged in. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a nightmare. It's a it's a uh, it's a very very dark corner of human existence when you start tinkering with other people's minds and using trauma based mind control and satanic ritual abuse uh, to control individual self interest and their sense of self preservation. And that, in a nutshell, was in the opening you know, documents for the MK Ultra program. This is what we want to do. We want to learn how to control others to do our bidding, even if it's against their self-interest and their self-preservation. So we're talking now about Manchurian candidates, uh, assassins, beta sex slaves, uh, couriers, mind-controlled, uh, you know, uh, super uh, soldiers, etc. You know, the, the, the Jason Bourne movies are not uh, completely... Uh, uh, fiction, although there, there's a lot of spin there, um, and certainly the uh, 1962 movie uh, that uh, uh, Frank Sinatra starred in called The Manchurian Candidate, uh, very, 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 very real. All this stuff was was uh, was all in place even at the time of 1963 Kennedy assassination, and so those of us who now study it can see how these uh, secret technologies and techniques have been used to control people. And uh, now I'm starting to realize, uh, like Brian too, that uh, this is uh, the mind control aspect is a huge part of the uh, global gang stalking operations. So uh, so that, that throws us back into, you know, um, looking at the past as prelude to the present, you know. Uh, so I've done a lot of work on my website trying to, you know, flesh out this history 
and I will probably have to do a lot more. Uh, but I think that, you know, free will may be at stake for humanity. I think our, our leaders want to uh, uh, create a psycho-civilized society, and this is the name of a 1962 book by one of the CIA mind control scientists, uh, Dr. Jose Delgado. And he's the guy who had the little stimulus and he implants put it in the brain of the bull famously in the bull ring and and the bull charged him and he had his little you know electronic gizmo there he pushed a button and the bull stopped dead in his tracks because uh, you know he had uh, now been electrically uh, uh <laughs> manipulated and so you know this 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 uh, this all goes way back they're not even hiding this anymore in any way shape or form because you can go to darpa and they've got the brain initiative of course mm-hmm. Well, that's where they dress it up as trying to help the wounded from war, stuff like that. But another story I came across the other day, and this actually comes from BGR.com, and the author is a Michael Weiner, and it says, scientists remotely hacked a brain controlling the body movements. Imagine somebody remotely controlling your brain, forcing your body's central processing organ to send messages to your muscles that you didn't authorize. It's an incredibly scary thought, but scientists have managed to accomplish the science fiction nightmare for real, albeit on a very small scale. And they were even able to to prompt their test subject to run, freeze in place, or even completely lose control over their limbs. And this comes from a PhD called Arnd Prowl at the University of Buffalo. I mean, this is... um, this is the kind of technology that they're talking about in public. So we can only imagine just what the Pentagon and the Department of Defense have got maybe 50, 100 years in advance of this. That's right, yeah. And one of the reasons they're able to bamboozle the rest of us, of course, is that they are 50 to 100 years ahead of us. And so we're playing catch up, you know, and uh, I certainly don't claim, I mean, I, I really wish you could in- interview somebody, an insider, you know, somebody who has actually worked on these programs. But of course, those guys would be sworn to secrecy and they'd probably lose their pensions or, or be killed or their families would be killed if they if they uh, broke silence, you know. So it's very much like the Manhattan Project back in World War II days, you know. The, the participants are generally sworn to secrecy. And um, uh, I think there's a few cracks in that edifice. Uh, we do get some uh, testimony now and again from a perpetrator uh, who says he was part of this uh, group that, uh, you know, was stalking. And this, uh, but we need to see a lot more of that. But, you know, as a way to kind of jump back into this, uh, this, what we'd like to talk about here uh, is a continuation of this post, uh, Kev, and it's, it's on my gangstalking mind control cults.com website. And it's a former DOD contractor, Brian Tu, discusses conscious computers and mind control, the two hypotheses. I, a uh, link to a three and a half hour interview that Brian does uh, with a lady named Renata, and then I summarize and transcribe the interview itself. And what I what we started with last time was going through my summary of the main points of his hypothesis. Uh, we got about halfway through, but before I we jump back into the middle of that, I would like to. I'm always kind of looking for the connections, and uh, in my 911nwo.com website. Uh, I have an extended series, um, is Crestone Baca, Colorado, that's where I live, the Vatican City of the New World Order, uh, an expose of the New World Religion. Okay, so I started this in 2011. And uh, my part one, there's now like 10 parts and 40 appendices, it's quite long. My part one uh, has some things that I think might connect with this topic. There was a guy named George W. Hunt. A businessman from Colorado who was invited to a semi-secret United Nations planning session in Colorado in 1987, preparatory to the Rio Earth Summit of 1992, which was, you know, the Secretary General was Maurice Strong, the guy who more or less founded Crestone Baca as in its modern uh, iteration of spiritual uh, United Nations. And Hunt has this eyewitness testimony. He, he wrote about it. He has his own website. He's recently died, but his website was called The Big Bad Bank. Um, and he, uh, he wrote this. In 1987, I attended the Fourth World Wilderness Congress. Marie Strong, the convener, 
said it was called the Fourth World because it was the fourth one of these environmental congresses that Edmund de Rothschild, now we're talking the real world power structure, Edmund de Rothschild had created. I learned later that the world order refers to the coming one world government as the Fourth World or world control by the world order where there is no more first, second, or third worlds, just a boundaryless planet which is called the fourth world wilderness. Yogis and shamans refer to it as the, quote, quote, fourth world wilderness, the lostness of the mind. The lostness of the mind refers to the collective consciousness. Persons will be coerced through lies, drugs, fear, and pain to surrender themselves, their egos, to the collective consciousness. The fourth world would be a return to a society much like the Caesars or Babylon or the Fourth Reich within the fictionalized societies described in Huxley's Brave New World and uh, Brave New World Revisited and Orwell's classic 1984. We will flourish with only a whimper. The world order wants to create a new society out of the ashes of chaos, a collectivist fourth world complete with a collectivist religion, collectivist finance, and unchecked world national socialism or fascism. The world order will offer Gaia, the Mother Earth, to the masses as the big brother image to worship in the fourth world. Well, you know, talking about the lostness of the mind and the collective consciousness, well, golly, this might have some connection then with what we're talking about with this global mind control gang stalking program. Uh, and that is, that's the reason I started with that. Um, Absolutely. Here's what, and you know, you add in that 5G rollout that is upon us. They say 2020, but it's upon us right now. I mean, this really is what I think is the technology that's going to bring us all in or potentially all of us into this hive mind. Right, right. Exactly. The hive mind, it's, that's the term that they themselves use. And here's what Brian too says about that. He said, this is neuro warfare, cold war 2.0. It's an arms race between the Americans and its allies on one side and the Russians and the Chinese on the other. Other countries are involved, but the main players are the above mentioned. It is an attempt by the United Nations. There's the United Nations again, and other international players, EU, et cetera, to turn the industrialized nations into the world of the world into a neuro society where people will not only be able to interact and communicate with each other via their brain waves, but where the sheepish masses can be censored and controlled at will by those governments. So now, yeah, we're talking about remote control of human beings and uh, the human mind and human behavior. And so Brian too, the reason that I got interested in his, um, uh, interview and uh, his YouTubes is that he does seem to have some kind of a coherent explanation for how all this might work. And I'm not, I'm not an insider, so I can't say exactly, you know, what's right and what's wrong about this model. We can use this as a model and call it a hypothesis that we can test. Um, uh, so anyway, that's, that's, uh, it's as much bigger than a few people who are getting scared on the street, I think. I think that this is a, a program that traces back to the intelligence agencies, agencies of the world, CIA, NSA, DIA, DARPA. Uh, and uh, is This is the kind of control and manipulation that they've always kind of fantasized about, but it's only now in this kind of modern age that they've really literally got that technology to be able to carry it out. Right. Exactly. They can carry it out and we're playing catch up out here in the real world because we've been, you know, watching TV and football games and and, you know, busy trying to make a living. And uh, this stuff has been very top secret. But again, uh, anybody who spends the time can look into the history of these top secret mind control. And programs. Doc, even I mean, even there, the use of the television, I mean, the frequency that that's at, I mean, that in itself in no small part adds to this kind of hypnotic state that everyone's been in while all of this has been going on. Right, right. Yeah, TV uh, TV is part of the propaganda system, the media, et cetera, all this just to keep us distracted and looking the wrong direction. But meanwhile, you know, and when you start talking 5G, and we have talked about fourth generation warfare as well, then you're realizing that, uh, well, now the, the citizen, the individual, the the small groups are the enemy, and uh, the uh, the powers that be, the military and uh, industrial complex, uh, 
uh, intelligence uh, ha have have the tools to uh, um, pacify and control uh, our our very thought processes. So this where is where we get into you know kind of the um, brave new world scenarios with very very high tech stuff that most people can't imagine, and we can we can talk a little bit about what some of those things might be because Brian too talks about that in his uh, in his discussions. Let's do that then, Doc. I'm just going to hand it to you because you know where you're going with this. You've done so much. And I mean, if any of the listeners out there take the time to go over to mind or sorry, gangstalking mind control cults.com, I mean, this really is you're not going to find any more in depth kind of writings about any topic, really. And Doc, I have to commend you for the lengths that you go to and really the information that you cram in there. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. And it's great to be able to get this out, you know, over the airwaves uh, that uh, should belong to all of us. And yes, there are a few little uh, bands that still do, uh, thank, thankfully, you know. But yeah, let me let me just uh, kind of continue with the main elements of the two scenario or the two hypothesis. Again, I, I'm attributing this to a TI by the name of Brian Tu, who has studied many of the neuroscientists, including Dr. Robert Duncan, um, who is uh, ex-CIA, mind hacker, as he puts it. Uh, and then his conscience got the better of him, and he's written a couple of books that kind of... Uh, you know, uh, divulge what's Would going on. Would he be on. up there with the likes of the Ewan Camerons? You always hear his name being associated with this kind of thing as well. Well, yeah, Ewan Cameron back in the 50s, uh, you know, very high degree uh, Mason uh, uh, from your neck of the woods, Scotland, who wound up getting CIA uh, money uh, to do some of his very nefarious uh, experiments on the mind, uh, which really set the stage for this, because uh, really what he was trying to do was erase the mind or the brain and then reprogram it. And we still use some of these terms that come from him, you know, deep patterning and psychic driving and whatnot. Uh, yeah, he was head of the world. So, no, uh, Dr. Robert Duncan is not in his, his league at all. Uh, Dr. Ewan Cameron was uh, head of the World Psychiatric Association, the Canadian Psychiatric Association and the American Psychiatric Association. He was at the very top of his profession, and yet he was doing these uh, horrendous experiments on uh, on his patients, uh, which er effectively erased uh, the memory of many of them, um, you know, turning them into you know incontinent uh, babies, adults. You know, um, so a very very interesting story at at. Uh, uh, Toronto McGill University, the Allen Memorial Hospital. Um, he carried out these kinds of experiments on CIA contracts, as well as contracts with the Canadian government. But uh, yeah, that was back in the MK Ultra days. So again, if one bothers to go back through the history of this stuff, um, it's all there. Uh, you know, <laughs> by 1960, the CIA had decided that uh, electronics, electro electrical stimulation of the brain a la Dr. Jose Delgado and his bull experiment, uh, was more promising than uh, all the drugs that they'd been working on for decades. Um, you know, after they studied uh, LSD uh, and for, you know, over a dozen years and determined that it was a psychosis-producing war weapon, then they dumped it on the youth of America. Um, <laughs> You know, what are these guys thinking? Well, they're obviously they're trying to destabilize and uh, uh, divide and conquer the population. Uh, always, uh, you know, so people think, oh, the CIA, very, very, you know, glamorous, uh, you know, James Bond, blah, 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 blah. CIA has always worked for the high cabal, which is the international bankers, and has worked at cross purposes with the American people. And they themselves have lived as kings, uh, you know, warlords, uh, destabilizing America and the entire world. But that's 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 an important side angle. But let's go back to uh, to the the two hypotheses. We made it through uh, 17 uh, uh, main points of it. Let me kind of pick up where we left off, which was solutions. And uh, Brian too was saying that there are ways that you know the individual who is being attacked psychotronically with these remote neural weapons can defend themselves um, and uh, uh, basically I, I guess I should just in case people haven't heard the previous discussion you know his basic scenario is that what's going on is that there are uh, extremely sophisticated conscious supercomputers 
and um, these are sending out steady streams of electromagnetic uh, uh, radiation, and that radiation can be uh, intercepted and, and uh, relayed uh, through satellite, uh, through cell towers, and through mobile platforms, a car, ship, uh, briefcase, but can be as small as a, as a tiny little chip. Um, and that uh, the, this, uh, uh, this steady stream of uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation is bidirectional. It goes to the brain of the individual from the conscious supercomputer and goes back. And using the satellites, they would use, the, say, the squid and the GPS technology to receive and send the signals respectively. I don't and, uh, yeah. there because we are almost on the break. And this is why it was so much better bringing you on early tonight because... We don't have to rush and cram it all in. And, of course, for the audience out there, Johnny Whistles, he'll be live with us after the break to join us for this amazing show yet again with Dr. Eric Karlstrom. Check out his work at gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com. One hour down, but still one hour to go. Loving it right here on tfrlive.com. Join us after the break. The Camp Baker Show. There we go. We are back. And thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning into tonight's Kev Baker Show right here on Truth Frequency Radio Network. You can find us at tfrlive.com. And just as promised, and as happens every night, I'm joined by my co host, Mr. Johnny Whistles. And you know, John. It's great to have you back on the show again tonight. And I was sitting there before the first segment tonight, and I was ever so lonely, John, because usually we're cracking jokes or we're getting to know a new guest. And, you know, it's only then that you become so aware that you're sitting there and you're waiting and you're going to be speaking to thousands of people. No pressure on me or anything, John. No, no, not at all, Kev. But, Kev, you're handle it, handling it like an absolute pro. So... The two hours was made for you, buddy. It definitely is. Definitely loving this. And, of course, John, you're my space correspondent, right? That's what we like to say. We have a little joke about that. And you were telling me, very disappointed in the eclipse yesterday, right? Yeah, I'm still alive, Kev. I thought the world would have been over, where the the crust would have been absolutely caving in on itself, all the things that I heard. But, no, I'm still here. But, <laughs> Kev, tonight... Uh, I mean, a couple of guys in the work, uh, Bernie, the big guy, sits next to me, and Mark, I was telling them about the, the guests tonight, uh, and they were said, oh, this is a must, so I'm hoping that they're listening in tonight, because when I was listening to half of the show, Kev, uh, you and Dr. Calstrom, man, wow, that was fantastic. It really is, and like I keep saying, I'm really proud of these shows because by securing the doc's time and I'm coming on here, I think we're putting out some of the very best information on the net and looking at even the analytics over on YouTube, stuff like that, you can see how many people are listening tonight. This is a popular topic, and I hate using that word popular. I just think it's relevant to a lot more people than we ever, ever appreciated. And tonight we are joined by Dr. Eric Karlstrom, you can find his work over at mind control or sorry gang stalking mind control cults.com he's also going to be back next month for a 9 11 special i can't wait to get into that with the doc but tonight we're carrying on our show about the two or the two hypothesis and doc i'm going to come right back to you because you set it up just nicely before the break and at least with this longer time together right my annoying kind of interjections and the fact that you spark off so many questions in my head, we can get around that tonight. Absolutely, yes. It makes it much more interesting to to be able to pause and, you know, talk about specific things that are, you know, seem out, outrageous and crazy, uh, uh, you know. But, yeah, let's let's go back to where we started uh, just before the break, which was the the two hypothesis, which is this TI, this targeted individual, Brian, too. Uh, you know, he's getting ideas, again, from studying the scientists who have written about this. And uh, so, you know, there would be many, many others who have worked on these kinds of things who would agree with much of his, 
what he says and maybe disagree with some of what he says. But I'm just kind of putting it out there as a total package, a coherent explanation. We can use as a model. We can test it. We can see if it works. We can test it against our own experience if we're TIs or against information as it comes in. But according to Brian, uh, 97, 98 percent of the millions of people who are now targeted with this system do not have any idea they're being targeted. So if nothing else, if we can wake people up to the fact that this is going on on a massive scale and some of those individuals who who uh, don't know what's going wrong in their life can start to see what's happening and start to defend themselves with this kind of knowledge, then this will be a tremendous public service. So, uh, so yeah, Brian says all mind control is based on censorship, restricting the victim's choices of behavior, which prevents the victim from engaging in external activities that interfere with the neural programming. So they want you, they want you to become very paranoid. They want to disrupt all your relationships, get you homeless, get you jobless, and uh, get you uh, dysfunctional, then they can really go to work on you. And then they, with their uh, with their technology, they can begin to control your memory through memory management by blocking real memories, injecting falsified and fabricated memories. And ultimately, they want to have direct behavioral control. Okay, so this goes right back to the initial documents of MK Ultra. We want to be able to control others, you know, to do things that we want them to do that are not in their self-interest and not in even their interest uh, of preserving their own lives. Um, now, we, we stopped last time with some solutions, uh, what they call shielding. Four kinds of shielding are, are noted. One is passive, you know, like putting, uh, you know, tinfoil or something up. One is mental, one is chemical, and one is electronic jamming. Uh, these, according to Brian, the mental shielding is by far the best and uh, because there is this steady stream of energy going to your brain which and the, and then the hive mind teams led by the clone that are connected with your brain through this conscious supercomputer and who are actually kind of the ones who are deciding what thoughts and images and sounds to interject into your consciousness false memories etc um uh, you, since you are actually, they're, they're watching you and, and watching your thoughts 24-7. They have three, three teams of uh, eight-hour shifts, maybe three or four or five, six people in the hive mind team. Uh, they take eight-hour eight shifts, and they're studying your brain in order to get a cognitive map of your brain, which they can then digitize, and they want to make a, a, a model a digital model, a map of your will, intellect, and emotions, which they define as your soul. Others have said, well, that's the, really the personality. But, but anyway, if they can predict and map and duplicate, replicate your will, intellect, and soul, the choices you make, the way you respond, then they can download that back into their conscious supercomputer, and that then can... <laughs> be involved in attacking other people and getting their intellect, will, and emotions uh, to be downloaded onto the conscious supercomputer. I know this sounds outlandish and absolutely crazy, but again, this is a model that we can we can examine and discuss, you know. But anyway, of the kinds of shielding, uh, mental shielding is the best, according to Brian, because there is this stream of electromagnetic energy coming to our brain with a carrier frequency that is specifically tailored to our own brain fingerprint, if you want to call it that. We all have our own unique brainwave patterns. Um, so the best way to foil it then, he, would, he has several methods. Multitasking, that confuses uh, their uh, equipment. There's no coherent pattern for them to download. Listening to pleasing music, he said dancing, etc., is great. Here's, I'll just read what he says in a letter to me. CIA, DIA, mind control technologies are based on what are called thought-triggered attacks, meaning the RNM, remote neural monitoring, supercomputer your brain is tied to by way of a bidirectional stream of electromagnetic low-frequency waves called the information and injection feedback loop must be able to predict and influence your reference choice during thought composition or their technology fails. 
Now, the good news, pleasing music defeats that by creating a dominant external stimulus. And it, your brain is now entrained away from the constant visual and verbal entrainments of the RNM, remote neural monitoring system, and it's you that is used to keep your brain entrained to a system and to, and, and to interfere with your memory and thought process. By listening to pleasing music, this shifts the victim's focus of attention away from the RNM system meaning the RNM supercomputer. Um, and this can no longer lock on to your emotional state. It can still attack you, and it will try to stop the music from defeating its technology, but their mind control fails. It is not just music, but lyrical music, which disrupts CIDI mind control technology, because as the victim follows along with the pleasing music and the lyrical content together with the musical tune, a form of multitasking, which entrains the, the brain away from the CIA, DIA, RNM supercomputer, defeating their mind control technology. So uh, then the pleasing music becomes the dominant external stimulus, and the brain tends to align itself with that external dominant uh, stimulus, the music, and uh, away from the brain entrainment of their system. So, uh, and he also makes the interesting claim that if you listen to pleasing music every day for six months straight, it will permanently alter your brainwave signature and permanently defeat their technology. Well, that's, uh, I don't know if it's true, but that's an interesting hypothesis. Uh, like uh, many TIs, Brian is a Christian, and he, uh, he listens to pleasing Christian music. He finds then he gets an extra benefit because, of course, of the positive message there. Uh, we'll I think gos gospel music would probably do that as well, uh, Doc. But yes. I think if, if we ever feel really down or we're being targeted, we just get out the guitar and a, a couple of verses of Rocky Mountain Way. I'm sure that will get rid of it. I, I have to agree with you, you know, and I think it's, I've been fortunate, uh, Johnny, that I uh, play banjo and guitar. And, and, and my second career, more or less, is as a musician. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I perform and I play uh, gospel music and other kinds of pleasing music. And I think, uh, of course, that entrains my brain and hopefully the people that are listening to it uh, away from any other more insidious influence. So, yeah, gospel music is, is, is probably right up there with the best thing you can do. And then he says, being spontaneous, you can actually trick their system. You can also bait and switch. You're going to think I'm going to go here and then at the last minute decide to go there. They're actually reading your thoughts. So they, they might have people set up uh, to uh, do their conversational and situational scenarios. Those would be the stalkers uh, if you decide to go to the grocery store. But if you say, okay, I'm going to go to the grocery store and then at the last minute you go to you know the gas station or something, that could thwart their system. It, it's very hard to imagine that all this could be uh, so elaborately accomplished, but uh, uh, unless you start talking to TIs, and then you realize it probably is. Uh, he also uh, mentions redirection when you realize you're under neural attack and they're putting a thought or an image in your brain. Uh, redirect your thoughts to something pleasant. Uh, he thinks of Jesus as a Christian. Um, and he, of course, having a basic understanding of how, how the technology works is an enormous advantage. So hopefully there's a benefit then to... Uh, you know, trying to learn this stuff and even study it. And I've got these things on the uh, the internet on my system, on my uh, website, and, I, and I, I've been studying it. So I would recommend that other people do that if they uh, believe they're TIs. Uh, maybe a little more complex is learn to read active memory. Calls it quenching. Because um, they're really dealing with your short-term memory, anything less than 30 seconds. And so if you can distinguish your own short-term memory from something that's interjected, then you can dissolve the interjected uh, short-term memory and hold on to yours. Because eventually what they want to do is switch. They want to replace your own short-term memories with their artificial memories, and this then enables them to control what you do and think. And, and even at the, at the uh, uh, level of, of how you compose a thought. Uh, it's it really pretty mind-boggling. Um, so anyway, that's the quenching. And uh, then he talks a little bit about passive shielding, chemical shielding, electronic jamming. Um, but he says the mental shielding is the best, and the pleasing music is probably the best uh, of all those. So that's kind of a win-win. 
Um, he says, uh, well, you, do you have any comments there, guys, uh, before we move along on the, what's possible to kind of thwart this system? No, I'm just addressing some of the chat room. I'm sitting here listening to you, Doc, and it's always an education, so informative. And Science Churchill in the chat room is asking, is this linked to the Mandela effect? And this is why I was so keen to have Anthony Patch and Doc Carlstrom kind of team up on the last show, because I was even saying to Johnny there in a chat how when you listen to this, it fits so perfectly with everything we cover with Anthony. And of course, Anthony talks about quantum pollution and the fact that they're able to manipulate our very thoughts at the quantum scale in our minds. So for me, everything we're hearing from the doc, I mean, we can't say it emphatically proves our theory to be correct, but this is the kind of stuff that they're talking about doing and are literally doing they're changing our memories. They're able to manipulate us at that very level. So that this is really, really great, Doc, and I'll just let you continue there. Yeah, and I think this brings up an interesting point. I mean, how many TIs are there globally? I mean, Brian, too, would say, you know, tens of millions. Others would say hundreds of millions. Others have actually said everybody's being mind-controlled and monitored to some extent. So, so you know, yes, this, this is very important. I mean, something like the Mandela effect, we call it a PSYOP. And, you know, it could even be the fact that they've got to such a level now that they are able to manipulate so many millions of people around the planet and, it could just be almost like some kind of field test and just the effectiveness of how they're able to manipulate one thought of one person over another. And more importantly, our memories, our long term memories are the ones that they're able really to get in about. Right. Yeah. And of course, going back to Orwell, he who controls the present controls the past. He who controls the past controls the future and so that's uh, Winston Churchill was always rewriting the past to fit uh, the needs of the party you know so and apparently they yeah it's like I said the other night as well doc I mean we're seeing the statues now these confederate statues the physical monuments of the past been ripped down as well right right just change the past and that's what they're doing with uh, impunity yeah okay so the Next point, uh, I guess uh, 21 here is uh, the CIA, DIA, NSA, DARPA are trying to implement a new artificial AI regime based on, quote, reverse engineering of the human mind. Uh, they wish to replicate the human soul, the will, the intellect, and the emotions of the TI, and they need this ability, according to two, to build the first quantum computers. Now, you guys might know more about quantum computers than I do, but according to Brian, we're we're on the threshold of that, and it's related to the, what's happening here with this uh, program. Uh, you see, that's okay, Doc, because, I mean, it's like we hear you using supercomputer, and that's where it's so brilliant that we do have a nightly show here, and I speak to so many guests, because we also know from other guests, especially Mr. Anthony Patch, about the quantum side of this, and when you're talking about the ability to manipulate so many people on this, such an individual level, and the computing power that must be involved in processing this. And I'm very appreciative of the fact you've never really looked into the quantum computer side of thing. And that's why this information all seems to fit together. It's kind of any of the shows here on TFR, Doc. I don't know how we do it. We can get <laughs> two random guests come along, but somehow it's like a jigsaw. Everything does fit together. And yes, we talk often about the quantum computers, the kind of ability they've got to map and model humanity itself because of this internet of things that is all around us now as well we're feeding all of our information back into this quantum computer that's basically got a virtual world where all of us have a digital avatar in there you know i'm starting to think doc that they're probably able to manipulate the digital avatar in a virtual world and that's somehow actually translated to effects in the real world yeah, yeah, it's frightening. This is, <laughs> this is for not for the faint of heart here. Um, uh, you know, the, the sci-fi is coming down so fast on us that uh, we, you know, it's self-defense to understand a few of these things. And, of course, you know, then the, the next... You here as well, Doc, because, I mean, there is a risk. It sounds sci-fi, but you've looked at some of these papers, and I've seen some of the scientific papers and stuff as well. And the thing is, it might sound sci-fi, but this is the real kind of science that we're getting to hear about. And again, we have to go back to that point we made earlier that if we're hearing about this, just what on earth are they doing? 
behind closed doors with 50, maybe 100 years in advance of this. Yeah. That's, yeah, what's DARPA doing now? Exactly. Okay, so n- number 22 is the uh, new technology. With the new technology, the CIA, CIA and NSA can read your thoughts, see through your eyes, and maintain a direct digital conversation with your mind using what they call brain-to-computer interface, BCI, and brain-to-brain interface. These are just two methodologies. Neuroscience has now been weaponized, that is, moved from the field of medicine to that of military and intelligence. And so that the goal, again, like going right back to MKUltra, the TI becomes a weapons platform. You can use the TI however you want. You want him to assassinate Joe Blow or, you know, say this to another uh uh, TI, uh, you, you almost with a push of a button, you can, you, the, the human has become roboticized. And uh, this is not a pretty thought. Uh, you know, I think it's time for time for some pushback here. Okay, you the know, next one. Think, go ahead. If we talk about everything becoming automated, the vehicles, everything else, I never thought we would become automated ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, it's a horrendous idea. And, of course, that, that idea is developed further with, with Brian's ideas here. The cyborg, cybernetic hybrids uh, um, without souls. Uh, you know, they, according to Brian, they can, they can map the, the will, the intellect, and the emotions. They can, um, uh, you know, play with frequencies and get us to, uh, to feel any emotions, whatever. They can move different parts of our body. But there's no way, according to Brian, that they can um, duplicate or replicate uh, the... A conscience, which he calls the spirit. Now, of course, there's you know these words can be defined differently, but he would say humans are triune. There was the 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 uh, intellect, the soul, the mind, the soul, and the spirit. And the spirit would be the conscience that you know kind of tells us, oh, I better not do that. The Holy Spirit then would speak to us through the spirit, and that's what makes the difference between say a normal human being and a psychopath who has no conscience. So he's saying that the, the, the weakness of all of this is that they'll never be able to uh, interject the spirit. But what will happen instead is we will have a race of uh, cybernetic psychopaths, uh, which is not a pretty thought either. Well, you know, was with the psychopathic elite just now that are running the planet. <laughs> That's right. They just have more company. That are any different. But don't carry on with this okay. hypothesis. Okay. Number 23 here. Memory management is achieved by way of an injection of false memories, I think I said this kind of, while simultaneously blocking real memories with a falsified, fabricated stream by using flashes of pulsed electromagnetic energy in sync with photonic implants. Now, can I just get you to read that again? And for the listeners out there, listen really, really closely, because this ties right into the question that Science Churchill was asking reference the Mandela effect. Just on you go, Doc. You repeat that bit again for us. These are Brian Tooth's direct words. I'm just the reporter here. Memory management is achieved by way of an injection of false memories while simultaneously blocking real memories with a falsified, fabricated stream by using flashes of pulsed electromagnetic energy in sync with photonic implants or remote nanoparticles which then match up with the RNM, remote neural monitoring supercomputer, and the remote subconsciousness of a human mind. The RNM supercomputer hooks the targeted individual to a mainframe, and the person is then monitored to their death, which is often brutal, for, for the purposes of mind control via what they call rehabilitation by torture. Now, we so don't not, have these pretty. photonic implants, but for the audience out there, Think of the chemtrails. Think of the geoengineering and all the particulates out there and the fact we speak about the likelihood that we're all laced with some kind of nanotechnology. Pulses of photons. We've all got our faces and our smart devices. We all at some point come and sit in front of the television, in front of the monitor, stuff like that. That's how easily that they are able to literally, I mean, it sounds like they're entangling themselves with our brains here. And this, for me, it ties in perfectly with the Mandela effect. Injecting false memories and blocking your real memory. Wouldn't that Mm -hmm. explain why so many of us are having different memories than so many others? 
wouldn't that be a perfect explanation? Doc, this is brilliant. I'll let you continue from there. We've got a couple of minutes before the break, but we've got enough. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I just have to point out, Kev, that you, you, you supplied the missing links there. Um, you know, nanotech is coming down into the air and the water from the chemtrails, and that gets finds its way into the neuros, uh, the synaptic gaps in our brains, and then the photonic. Uh, the the uh, photonic computers can actually take a picture of our brain, and and I guess they're taking pictures of the, the they're mapping the uh, the uh, synaptic gaps in our minds that that are kind of uh, clogged, you might say, with the nanotech. So so yeah, you, that that's an element of this this whole thing that Brian talks about. Okay, the next one is the computer uses the remote neural monitoring system which measures physiological responses emitted via electromagnetic impulses of the brain. RNS, RNM is designed to capture your thoughts and then re-inject other thoughts, their thoughts, back into your mind with a falsified fabricated stream. Okay, the next one, EEG cloning, which is uh, electroencephalogram, heterodyning or mind melding, is the synchronizing of brain waves between the clone members of the hive mind teams these are the people that are probably at universities or psychiatric hospitals who are on government contract to do this kind of work. They're working directly for the CIA and DIA, and they're making good government pensions and good money, and they're walking out amongst, you know, they are walk among us. They're, they are psychopaths uh, who are doing this work. And the victims, uh, uh, so you're synchronizing the brain waves between the clone members of the hive mind teams and the victims to achieve direct behavioral control. Cloning everyone's, someone's mind onto someone else's changes their personality and behavior. But in the best conditions, the entire body will, intellect and emotions are taken over. Okay, so that's direct behavioral control. They typically target your faith based on scripts in order to subdue or radicalize it. And this is all big, you know, lab experiment for these guys. Hot and cold sensations, voices, sounds, images, objects moving on their own are replicated to create a haunting based on the mind-controlled victim's belief system. And hold it there, we're almost out of time. And, you know, listening to some of this, you'd think we're talking about some alien invasion that's taking place and nobody's known about it. But it's not. This is the real world. You'll be back on the other side with Dr. Eric Carlson. Is the Kev Baker Show. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kev Baker. I'm your host for the next half hour. That's all we've got left right here on the Kev Baker Show tonight. And of course, we're joined by Dr. Eric Karlstrom. And Johnny Whistles is here as well. Don't forget tomorrow night coming up on the show. Anthony Patch will be back. We'll be getting back into CERN. We'll also be taking a look at a strange advert- advertisement that is signalling possibly just the times that we are living in. You see, I'm sure you all want to turn up to hear that tomorrow night. But tonight, like I say, we're getting into gang stalking and it's a really far, far, far more serious problem and far more widespread than I ever, ever, ever imagined. And Johnny Whistles, I mean... It's quite a dire kind of situation that we're talking about here. And I don't say that to spread fear or anything, John, but, you know, when they're able to go in and literally play about with your thoughts to the point where, you know, you might not even have an inkling to fight back anymore, that's dangerous stuff. And you were asking the doc a question during the break, and I'm going to hand it to you, John. Yeah, doc, it's just the the fact that, I mean, be it people... uh, protesting on the street or be it sabotage of these towers do you think that people will actually get to that stage or by then will people be dumbed down that much that they will just accept anything that's been put into their brains well that's really an important question uh i think it really depends on you know how quickly we can spread the the truth about this you know because i look around at, you know even down in mexico i mean everybody's got their cell phones they're totally dependent on that technology they don't understand the downside of the cell towers you know or even that you know that the radiation coming off their own cell phone can fry their own uh, you know reproductive organs um so, but, but you know, the people who are out there on the street uh, doing the street theater, uh, the thugs, often they're, you know, 
uh, low life types that are paid a little bit of money to harass uh, the targets with these uh, uh, situational and conversational scenarios in order to elicit a response that the supercomputer can measure. Okay, so that you know, sometimes I've I've read I've heard that uh, say there these people are being enlisted for these this kind of work. Okay, they need work. Uh, there's sometimes police departments will en- uh, enlist them and say, okay, sign this waiver. And the waiver is, well, if the TI <laughs> kills you, you know, because what you're doing is you're pushing the TI's buttons. That's what you're paid to do. You're paid to, you know, to make them very paranoid, mad, etc. So uh, I've actually seen online uh, waivers, you know, that the, these these perps have to sign. Um uh, yeah, I, I think it's a matter of taking the in righteous anger that we all should have and applying it uh, in an intelligent way. I mean, what they want me to do, for instance, I'm sure, is to, you know, just, you know, take a baseball bat to one of these TIs who's harassing me or these perps who's harassing me. And, of course, then they lock me up and I, you know, that's I'm gone, man. And, you know, so the, the perp then is, is taking a risk. Uh, but the goal is to entrap me as a TI or to to make me do something that is so outrageous and crazy that they can maybe commit me and get me locked up in a mental hospital. I mean, if or commit suicide. This this is a considered a victory for the uh, for the program when, that's almost, when one of these that's yeah. one of their tactics almost to gaslight you into reaction. Yes, into absolutely, like absolutely. That. That's definitely yeah, they're trying to. Yeah. yeah, it's a victory for them. Right. Right, so this is not a warm and fuzzy program. I mean, this is this is evil, as evil as it comes. And the fact that so many segments of society are involved and that there's so much money involved in this uh, is is very very troubling to me. It, it what it means is the society's shot. I mean, it's like who wants to say to save a society where you know you have this kind of you know eating your own kind of thing where the bad people. Uh, you know, neutralize the good people. I mean, this is this is about as awful as you can even imagine. But yeah, there's got to be some response. Uh, you know, short of you know just going out there with. A, you heard of the guy that shot up the naval yard? You know, back east. Uh, I don't know in New Jersey or something. And he had a gun, a you know big shotgun, and he carved on the headstock. Uh, this is my ELF weapon. Well, apparently he had been tortured, you know, electronically, and he just pushed over the edge, and then he started shooting. And so I think most of the, uh, you know, the shootings that we, uh, the, you know, that terrorize us, this is really terror is what it is. It's, it's terrorism, explicit and implicit terror. If you're on a terrorist watch list, you can be put in this program or if you're a person of interest. And then, you know, the slow destruction of you, the TI, occurs. Uh, that's explicit terror. You're now being terrorized by the entire society. And if you're not a TI, but you know a TI, or if you know, then then it's implicit terror. Oh, that guy spoke up. Look what happened to him. I better keep my mouth shut. You know. So that's like the old Phoenix program back in the Vietnam War. It's just a way to take down the domestic population through explicit and implicit terror. So this this is terrorism. And uh, one of these times, Kev, we're going to sh- should spend a whole show talking about terrorism because the the war on terror is just the greatest covert operation in history. It's the biggest scam. It's the biggest lie. It's driving all of just about all of the major world events now. And um, you know who's doing the terrorism is the governments. You know, uh, so you know, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, governments they just can't seem to get anything done in peacetime at all. They thrive in chaos. They really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially the CIA and the other agencies. But going back to this, uh, if you don't mind going back to this, uh, number 26, they target your faith based on these scripts, which are all, you know, based on psychology. And they want to subdue or radicalize your faith. An example, the first Gulf War, 1991, maybe we talked about this, thousands of Iraqi soldiers surrendered their arms and uh, uh, raised up their weapons and then dismantled them and uh, stated later that Allah had told them to surrender and dismantle their weapons. Well, this is the voice of God, the voice is going right into their head by psychotronic weapons. And, uh, of course, what did the U.S. government do then after they're on their knees with their weapons dismantled? They mowed them down like, you know, you know like a shooting gallery and they killed them all. Um, so there's nothing warm and fuzzy about that. Uh, I mean, if you think about that, Doc, I mean, there we have the perfect example. I mean, 
that first Gulf War years ago. And it sounds like the very technology that we compare to now when it comes to 5G, because it's this use of the millimeter wave and the fact that you were saying yourself there a moment ago, the insertion of thoughts and memories. That's exactly what they've done to the Iraqi army over 20 years ago. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And very effectively. Um, but, you know, any war then that the DOD can concoct, you know, then becomes a, a way to experiment with the latest weaponry. And you can bet that right now they're experimenting with things that we can hardly imagine, you know. Um, so anyway, all of this was CIA, DOD, mind control technologies at work and mass manipulation of populations and, and their religions against them. Um, and then when we get into the geopolitics a little bit, the next one is, this is a neuro warfare weapon system being used and deployed and tested and improved. And this weapon system is being deployed in Arab Spring and the Ukraine and Belarus and other countries that are allied with Russia. Ultimately, this is neuro warfare between the Russians and the Americans, according to Brian Tu. Um, and uh, other countries are involved, but the main players, you know, are, are Russia, China, the United States, uh, the United Nations and EU, and uh, the idea is to turn, you know, the world into this uh, neuro society where people can actually have a hive mind communicate e with each other through their brain waves, and then the governments can control what they think. Uh, it doesn't sound good to me. I think maybe now is the time to stop this nonsense if we can figure out how. <laughs> okay, the next one, trauma-based mind control is a deadly game of deception and manipulation. The technology is designed to mimic normal cognitive behavior, the memory and thought process. The victim is supposed to become dependent on the remote neural monitoring and remote neural manipulation, RNM technology, and they will be able to control the population of the United States and the world by reconfiguring the human brain, and by default, they will be able to re reconfigure societies. So this, according to Brian too, is a tool the world elite has long sought after and now it's finally within their grasp. Um, yeah, so now we're getting into total brave new world control. Uh, next one, the program is designed to A, turn a good person into a bad person and a bad person into an evil person, and B, make a cognitive map of the victim's brain that will allow the programmers to see through the victim's eyes, hear through the victim's ears, feel what the victim feels, and control the thoughts and behavior of the victim, essentially turning him, her, into a super soldier, spy, or whatever. Um, now, this is a kind of a sad part, but you can expect it. The number 30, as in the MK Ultra program of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, children six years of age and under are being targeted with satanic ritual abuse which is the monarch programming, trauma-based mind uh, control programming, in order to create multiple personality disorder and to ensure that these individuals will readily dissociate when they are adults. And when they're dissociated, of course, then they can be easily influenced and, and uh, can actually be, can be triggered back and forth from one alter, subalter personality to another. And of course, uh, it's uh, very disturbing information, but it is imperative that we get this information out there because, you know, when we read about MK Ultra programs and the children involved, never ever lose sight of the fact that MK Ultra has never gone away. And these things have never gone away either. And I hate the term Pizzagate, but we've seen everything that kind of unfolded around the whole Podesta emails and stuff like that. And that just gives a glimpse into this very, very dark world that is very, very real for too many people in the world. It really is. And it's something that we've touched on on the show at times. We're not going to get into all the kind of nasty stuff tonight. And it is, it's a horrible, horrible topic. And that's because we've got hearts and we're not psychopaths. And it's just another kind of piece of evidence that we truly are up against a psychopathic, satanic elite if this is the kind of stuff that they are up to. And oh, by golly, are they up to it, Doc? Oh, yeah. I think they're going for the... They're going for the whole enchilada, Kev. I think that they think their time is very close. And um, it probably is. I mean, and of course, if you look at the Revo book of Revolution, Revelations, which they seem to be following almost as a script, uh, we, we do seem to be very close to the, to the uh, you know, point of uh, the I mean, end times, Armageddon, etc. I mean, think I mean, you hear about end times, Armageddon, stuff like that, and 
You think of this system that we're talking about tonight, complete and utter control over 7 billion people on the planet. That's literally what we're talking about here. It's going to be absolutely close to being switched on when this 5G eventually rolls out. This, for me, is the kind of, the, it's almost the thread that's going to connect us all to this hive mind. And, I mean, there can be no other time in history when it has been so dark, when these elites have been so close to this level of control, Doc. Never have they ever been this close to it. Oh, absolutely. You can see it in a thousand different ways, which is why what we're doing, I think, is so important. I mean, at first people better wake up and then they better pray up and then they better better take action. You know, um, they better uh, get informed and then and then expose this. And and we got to put our heads together and, and protect uh, our, our our world. I mean, we are God's creations and uh, uh, this is not what God had in mind, you know, so I'm sure God is is, uh, you know, he's going to he's going to back um you know he's going to back uh, his beloved children, but maybe we have to wake up too. You know, pray to God, but keep rowing to shore, kind of thing. You know, and that's why uh, I tell people. I mean, it matters not to me what kind of belief system you have or what religion you're from. I mean, when we're examining the enemy here, it's quite obvious that they're dark and they're satanic. And even next month, when you come on for the nine eleven special, where I'm sure we're going to hear from you and that that. It's the same kind of dark, satanic cults at work behind that as we're seeing here with all this stuff we're covering, all the paedophilia as well. It's that common thread between them, Doc. Absolutely. Yeah, we can call it the Illuminati. We can call it lots of things. But yeah, the same patterns come back around. Well, let me just, uh, we're close here. Let me just keep going a couple more. Let's uh, do, let, let's yeah. do it. I'm going to put some tape on my mouth. Go for it, Doc. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> number 31 victims are subject to remote neural attacks 24 hours a day seven days a week attacks are most intense during sleep at which time neuro linguistic programming is used so they can kind of set the stage for the next day's uh, uh conversational and situational scenarios um uh at night so you know it's very important to try to protect your sleep try to protect your mind during sleep uh one other positive solution, I think, uh, is out there. There's a couple things that TIs can do to uh, get this external dominant stimulus at night. Uh, there's a guy named Dave Case, who is an electronic engineer in Missouri, who invented a – he was a TI. And he invented, uh, by combining oscillation oscillators, he made a CD – that, uh, you know, goes, and then the idea is to scramble the, the incoming signal. And I've been using it now for about a month with headphones. And uh, I sleep much better now, sleep through the night, uh, where I was uh, more sleep deprived prior to that. So so there are, you know, uh, once we start to understand how the system works, uh, then we can get, um, he says he's been free of, of this uh, program for 17 years. He still uses the CD at night and as much as you can during the day. So anyway, I've got an article about that on my website. Okay, the next one, mind control consists of controlling your memory and thought process. They're erasing specific memories and implanting others in order again to control your thoughts and behavior. Now this one's a new one, 33 hyper game theory, which is non-cooperative gaming theorem, involves constantly and perpetually altering the values and daily activities of the mind control victim that he uses to function and survive. This forces the victim into an endless series of counter moves to survive the trauma. Each counter move can be measured electromagnetically. This deadly game of deception and manipulation results in the premature death of the victim. It is cold-blooded murder. Okay, these are the ideas of John Nash, game theory, game theory uh, but now it's, it's hyped up to hyper game theory. Move, counter move, move, counter move where the TI is forced to defend themselves uh, against these attacks, and they're measuring all of his uh, counter moves to predict uh, their next move. And, and, of course, now you're playing against a conscious supercomputer. I mean, Bobby Fischer could be in there for all that, you know. <laughs> for all that. Always That's another. modeling, always improving that predictive capability. And, you know, we've seen that again in the story I covered recently where the AI won at the Dota 2 championships it was playing a professional player at one of these massive multi-online games doc that didn't even know this game it learned it absolutely from a blank screen 
just a set of pixels. And in the space of two weeks, it was able to learn all the strategies and things that it's even confusing for a human to pick up on. And that's how quickly it's able to model things and then obviously predict the moves of the very best players in the world. And it might sound totally unrelated, but this is how AI in these supercomputers has always been about gaming. And from that there, we can see how it is able to eventually predict all of our moves, whether it's in games or whether it's in real life. And this is a level of technology that we're trying to hammer home to all of you out there. I honestly can't stress how important this is because it's like the chemtrails. We all breathe the same air. It's like the food they've even jacked with that. We're all intaking these nanoparticulates and it all ties back into this system because, Doc, without these nanoparticles and anything at all, I think that that's what really integrates us on that physical level into this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a full spectrum of dominance, as you mentioned in one of your uh, interviews, um, attack. I mean, they're going for control of virtually all natural systems. Uh, actually, Bobby Fischer is a good person to read and study about this because he he was very outspoken against the Jews and the CIA who, who were following him all the time. And uh, he was a truth teller and he was hounded to his early death. He may well have been a T.I. And uh, that's why I use that example. And of course, if they were successful at mapping his intellect, will, and emotion, and putting it back into the conscious supercomputer. I mean, this was perhaps the greatest chess master of all time. Uh, he was, you know, he'd be a pretty tough adversary um, in that in that machine. It's so fun, uh, It's funny you even use that term adversary, because this is exactly the, what they call the neural networks that are learning like this stock. They call them adversarial neural networks right from their inception they're up against us they're, they're wanting to win they're wanting to beat something yeah and and the, now the citizen you and i are the enemy and that's the big shift that people need to understand that's what fourth generation warfare is all about now the civilian is the enemy now the population is the enemy um the enemy's everywhere he's nowhere he's a terrorist he's an insurgent he's a dissident he's a you know whoever we don't like that's who the enemy is so we'll have these little terrorist watch lists and no-flight lists and person of interest lists, and pretty soon we'll divide and conquer the whole society by doing Tell this. you, Doc, if you could uh, digitize, or if they had digitized George Orwell's consciousness, or if somehow you can bring him back in a time machine and let him see what it's like now, I honestly think he would burst out laughing, and he would think that we're actually pulling his leg, because this is even further and wilder than him and Huxley ever dreamed up. It is, it is, yeah. But he sure got the spirit of it. <laughs> yeah. And okay, and then we're... Go even ahead. Look into them. I mean, they were connected to the kind of secret societies and these big think groups as well, the ones that are still pulling the strings today. So, I mean, they were probably in on the know and where things were heading. That makes it even more frightening, the fact that way back then, they knew exactly where we were heading. Even before all the technology was realized, this is exactly right. where they were taking us. That's right. And he wrote that book in 1948, 1984. And yes, he was in the know. He was in uh, MI6. There you he, go. Was a, he was a communist socialist, too. And we've got um, even a half minute to talk. And again, I'll try not to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost there, Kev. Okay, so in, in my summary of the two hypotheses, and people are encouraged to go on my website, listen to his interview, and then read the transcription and, and read my summary. But I've got it now to summarize to 35 points. We're on 34. Uh, so these are Brian Two's words. 21st century technology has now replaced organized religion as the new opiate of the masses. The soul of man, will, intellect, and emotion can now be possessed, quote-unquote, artificially and digitally causing the eternal death of the human soul. Oh, that's a sweet idea. We're no longer dealing with artificial intelligence. We are now faced with a concept that could never have been conceived by our forefathers. We're now dealing with the creation of artificial life. Living, breathing, cybernetic human beings who are not human at all. Never born and without mother or father. Created inside a top secret laboratory from synthetic genomes. They will become a new species of superhuman cyborg beings who will use this technology to manipulate time, matter, and space with their brainwaves, 
who will be able to obtain knowledge by mere contemplation and who will be able to engage in interdimensional communications such as remote viewing, synthetic telepathy, etc. Well, he's talking about transhumanism. And this has been on the drawing board by the elites uh, right back to the same era when George Orwell wrote 1984. Norbert Wiener uh, wrote a very influential book right at the end of World War II, which uh, is a Jew, and it inspired a series of conferences called the Macy Conferences uh, that was presided over by Gregory Bateson and his wife, Margaret Mead. And uh, it was wasn't a whole series he, was, of... Wasn't he looking at like controlling the human mind like a machine? Yes, it was called the Man Machine Conferences. Yeah, he's and something he, he definitely to check out. Definitely good shout, Doc. Yeah, and then the very last one, I want to have a couple minutes for this. The Doctrines of Christianity provide some support for TIA's mind control victims. The Bible says whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things, Philippians 4.8. And then he says, uh, Brian says, CIA, DIA, satanic ritual abuse can easily be defeated by depatterning, and that's that's uh, you and Cameron's word, by depatterning the neural programming using Christian content and Christian music, gospel music, provided the victim's belief system is compatible with the Bible and Jesus Christ. Other religions are easily ma manipulated by this technology, especially Islam and the Eastern karma-based religions. But born from above Christian believers have defenses to this technology, and this is very important, including the doctrines of the faith and the Holy Spirit. We, and, and I think this is a very important point. You see a lot of TIs are Christian, and a lot of TIs believe that the Holy Spirit is what is keeping them afloat. Well, including we about including myself, Kev. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we talk about possession and stuff like that, and there is a spiritual aspect to everything we've spoken about tonight, and we've covered that in a previous show. But I think there's no coincidence that when you hear so many of these testimonies from people that were either present at these kind of supernatural events or the people involved themselves, I mean, when they call out the name Jesus Christ, this has an effect in the room. And it seems to be the only common word. It's like a spell you can throw out there, no matter what religion you may be from. And we're talking about this now in the world of this kind of gang stalking. And that's why you can definitely see that there's a spiritual aspect to all of this going on, a very spiritual side to the warfare that we're all embroiled in right now, whether people realize it or not, Doc. Absolutely. And I think at, at base, at, at its very fundamental essence you know we're we are in a war for mental sovereignty spiritual sovereignty and our national sovereignty as well but most important spiritual because it's almost you know uh, the, the well it's satan's uh, moment i mean he's trying to take over the whole enchilada his minions are working hard they've uh, implemented plans now that they have formulated you know for generations and centuries and millennia even and uh, almost we're, I, we're almost at a time, Doc, and you know that little horned imp that he is, he can go back to hell because he won't get any free time or any kind of space to operate while there's shows like the Kev Baker Show and Truth Frequency Radio on the airways. Now, Doc, you can find his work over at gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com and eventually I got it right tonight. And tomorrow night, I will be back with Johnny Whistles and Anthony Patch as well. And we'll be continuing on from this show. I know that's how it's going to work because that's just the synchronicity. So, from myself, for another night, wherever you are, make it TFR. And did he touch that dial? <laughs>